Hello and welcome to the pre-reading for Analyzing Argument. This is Waverly Middle School's 8th grade English. And the information can be found in your literature textbook on page 592. Clear learning targets for this assignment. CLT 3.04, Reasoning and Evidence. I can evaluate the reasoning and evidence of the argument and specific claims in a text. CLT 3.05, Conflicting Views. I can analyze texts that provide conflicting views, facts, and information. Reading skill. Analyze, proposition, and support. So for this assignment, we're going to read uh, two different texts with opposing viewpoints on a specific proposal. So in editorials and speeches, a writer or speaker often presents a proposition, which is a type of claim or argument. The writer then provides support or evidence for that claim. Support may include facts, expert opinions, or personal observations. As you read a text with a proposition, analyze the support to see if the proposition is logical. When I analyze whether an analogy makes sense, I think about what's involved in the comparison. Suppose a candidate running for office says she is a good mother. I'm going to think to myself, what does that tell me about how good the candidate will be at making decisions about laws? Basically, what does being a mother have to do with being a politician? I realize that the statement is not about the candidate's qualifications for office. That makes it a false analogy. So let's look at some examples of statements that show errors in logic, false analogies, uh, and a couple other ones. The first uh, error in logic is oversimplification. So in an example, if you own a cell phone, you should support the right to use it anywhere you want. Okay, this ignores other alternatives. You're just oversimplifying uh, the, the entire argument. Another example, false analogy, which we just talked about. Outlawing cell phone use while driving is like outlawing eating while reading. The comparison is irrelevant. Those two things really don't have anything to do with each other. Insufficient evidence is another error in logic that sometimes you'll see uh, when you're analyzing support for an argument. An example, I do not know anyone who has had an accident because of a cell phone, so I do not think they are a problem. This is a false conclusion. Um, just because you personally don't know doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, there's especially if there's other evidence to the contrary, uh, that would be a false conclusion. And the last example of errors in logic, jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, this basically means a lot of people support something, so I'm going to too. Uh, for example, everyone I know drives while talking on cell phones, so it should be legal. Uh, it assumes an opinion is correct because it is popular, which is uh, silly. Um, you may have heard your parents tell you at some point, uh, if everybody jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? Um, you know, that's what jumping on a bandwagon is, and that's not in and of itself a very good argument. So, uh, for these two texts that we're going to read, they're both very short, but they are um, very content area specific. Um, you know, one's a newspaper editorial, the other's a, a speech by a governor. So there's some vocabulary we're going to want to go over. And you may want to fill out a uh, vocabulary graphic organizer while we do this. All right, the first word, distraction. Probably know what distraction means, but they're being very specific in their use of the word distraction. Uh, distraction is a noun. And the definition is something that draws away the mind or attention. So it's very important that you understand that specific definition. In the text, it's going to be used the following way. The mental distraction of conversing behind the wheel is so great that switching to a headset or other hands-free approach does nothing to reduce the danger. This is on page 593 of your textbook. The next word is legislation. This is also a noun. And legislation uh, is laws or a law that, that's been passed, laws that have been passed. In the text, the result is hands-free legislation that passed the California Assembly 
and Senate last week. That's on page 593. And the last content area vocabulary word, compliance. Compliance. Which is a noun. Means heeding a request, command, or law. Uh, a synonym would be obedient. Um, this dog all by itself is in compliance of cleaning up after your pet laws. And in the text, education is a major focus for the CHP because public awareness of the issue and voluntary compliance with this, this new law can have a significant impact on crashes even before the new law goes into effect. This is on page 596 of your textbook. So now that we've gone over uh, some of the pre-reading uh, ideas for this assignment, you're going to read the actual text. The first text is an editorial called Hands-Free Laws Won't Solve the Problem. That's on page 593. That's a primary source taken directly from a newspaper um, analyzing the issue of hands-free laws. And the second text is a speech given by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator himself, while he was governor of California, when he's signing in a law, this hands-free law that the first uh, the first text is actually arguing against. So you're going to get two different uh, opinions on this idea of hands-free laws and uh, whether they're a good idea or not. And your job is to analyze those arguments. Um, you know, not necessarily say one's right, one's wrong. What are the good points about, you know, both texts? What are some of the bad points, you know? That might lead you to a conclusion, uh, but maybe different people have different conclusions. Uh, we're working on the, the skill is what we're focusing on. So one way to focus on that skill is to not just read these just once. These are very short texts, so you can read them more than once. So we're going to read each selection multiple times following this protocol. Multi-draft reading protocol. On your first reading, do what you would normally do. Read to identify the key ideas and details. Uh, this is what we do in our reading log all the time, and we're going to do a reading log for this text as well. Uh, if something seems important, jot down a little quote and explain why you think it's important or connection you have to that part of the text. Uh, but on your second reading, start to identify the structure of the text, specifically looking for um, the support, right? Uh, both of them have a proposition, you know, one's for the law, one's against the law. Uh, but what support do they use to back up that argument? How do they structure that uh, support? And then on your third reading, read to integrate knowledge and ideas by connecting text to the world uh, connected to your own experiences and other texts. So you're going to you know, compare the text to each other and maybe other texts that you've read as well. Okay. So this is your task for reading uh, these two texts and analyzing arguments. Good luck.